The role your hand plays is overrated. And I'm gonna prove it at the end of this video. Of course, it is an important factor. But it only matters combined with this completely underrated thing most people don't even consider. And that same thing is also the reason why the same hand, top 2 pair, can serve well as a bet in one spot, but is a must check in another one. So what is it? Well first of all, these river spots may look very similar, we have top 2 pair, kind of a connected runout with a backdoor flush, and even the same random dude as our opponent. But the first difference is already happening preflop. With queen 10 off, Viktor Malinowski raises from the small blind and gets called by Linus in the straddle. With king jack off, he limps the small blind and calls Linus's iso raise. So the ranges both players are playing are already completely different. Hitting top pair is always nice and against the 66% part C bet, we call. The turn is one of the best cards for us. But unfortunately, Linus just checks it back. Which leaves us with an interesting decision on the river. To bet or not to bet. With queen 10, we open raise preflop. So a dry queen high flop favors our tight opening range more than Linus's wide flatting range. So betting one third part is a good option. And since the bet is so small, Linus can and should continue with a lot of weak hands. On the turn, another rather high card hits our tight range pretty well compared to Linus's wide preflop and flop calling range. Which means we have a huge range advantage, with a relatively high amount of strong hands like top pair and better. A good reason to overbet against a wide and rather weak range with relatively less top pairs or better. And when we're called, we again have to think about what to do with our top two pair. One thing that often speaks against betting top two is the fact that you block a lot of your opponent's calling hands. Since Jack X and King X are some of the most likely hands that would check back the turn and call a river bet, having both a king and a jack in your hand lowers the chances that your opponent has one of them. We can see that by seeing King Jack being bet less often than other lower two pairs like 7-8, Jack-8 or King-4. However, in this spot, King Jack is still betting sometimes. Primarily with the King of Clubs, which in theory blocks less of Linus's King X, because he wouldn't even bet those on the flop. But even his actual combo is bet for a small sizing sometimes. Why? Well, it's likely because blocking calls isn't the only thing to consider here. Checking with such a strong hand still needs to bring us EV in some form. And that EV can only come from our opponent betting after we check. Those bets would need to come from A. Bluffs or B. Worse value bets in order for us to profit from them. So let's check how many of those we could expect. In terms of bluffs, we see a few candidates. Queen 9, Queen 5, 9 3, 10 6, 9 6, and 10 5 would be combos the solver would bluff with, and ace 2s and ace 3. Not quite many overall. Also, they are combos which need to be checked behind on the turn and even iso raised preflop in the first place. Getting these frequencies remotely right can be very difficult for a human, and maybe even for Linus. So one could potentially imagine that the bluffs might be a bit less in reality than what the solver says. We do see some worse value bets like lower two pair. Single pairs of kings also bet, but we can already see that these don't even bet always. Ace king checks behind quite some combos and king 9 and king 10 check almost purely. Even aces would almost never bet against the check. So we would lose value against these hands by not betting ourselves. Which is fine in theory if we can expect to get some of that profit from imposition's bluffs. But still, even in theory, betting king jack has basically the same EV as checking. So if you also expect your opponent to potentially bluff less often than the solver in this line, betting yourself and targeting those weaker pairs would be the better play. 
What's different here is that we arrive at the river with a completely different range. After betting flop and over betting turn, our range on the river includes a relatively small amount of bluffs. Because any flush got there, all king jacks made a straight, and even hands like jack 9 at least picked up a pair. Additionally, because we raised preflop, we still have all over pairs and a bunch of top pairs. So being in Linus's shoes, calling even a small bet wouldn't be possible with any pair lower than a 10. Which means that queen 10 actually discounts 100% of our opponent's calling range of worse hands. Contrary to that, when we check out the flop as a limper and the turn when check check, our range isn't nearly as strong. We have many more ace high hands which could bluff the river. And the solver would even have some queen highs as well. So for Linus, calling pairs of 7s, 8s and even some 4s would be the GTO play. Which means betting king jack doesn't block away all of his worst calls. Also, on the flip side, we see that against a check with queen 10, Linus's bluffs would mostly come from low pairs of deuces and fives, which are turned into bluffs. These could call the turn because Victor's overbetting range was so polarized that any of Linus's pairs was ahead of his bluffs. But on the river, a lot of Victor's bluffs improved. So on this river, Linus's pairs of deuces and fives are almost worthless regarding showdown value. Instead, they make for great bluffs, because Linus himself can have a bunch of two pair sets, straights and flushes on his runout. So Victor would have to fold 9x hands and a lot of 10x, queen x and even aces against the jam. And when Linus has a great incentive to bluff, Victor has a great incentive to slow play his top two. Which should by now have answered the question of what is the other important factor next to your hand itself that is severely underrated. It is of course the ranges behind yours and your opponent's actions. Depending on the way the hand played out before, both players ranges can look completely different. And a similar hand on a similar runout can favor different actions. That is also the reason why the answer to this posted question should be not enough info because the action and ranges leading to the spot were not provided. Sorry for the trick question, but it does actually prove the point that the hand itself is still being overrated and the ranges and action leading to the spot are underrated by a lot of players. To add another proof, if we look at the same board from the queen 10 hand, but instead input the line that was played with the king jack hand, so a limp call pre, a check call on the flop and a check check on the turn, the solver would now heavily favor betting queen 10 on the river, with Victor's actual combo being a 100% bet for mostly a pot size. Still, as always in poker, playing your hand as well as you can, can lead to the best possible outcome. But it can also cost you your stack. No regrets. Playing top 2 of course isn't the only thing you need to know. So if you want to unlock your full potential as a player, this video will be exactly for you.